Blue Ridge Rock Festival had canceled nearly after 200 stagehand workers went on strike. Now, if you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, Tank the Tech put out a video about it. He was there and he talks about everything that went down over there on the festival. So make sure you go check out his video. He talks about the situation that happened. He says it was pretty much a shit show. The strike ended the music. So I thought it was because of like, I mean, it was because of the setup of the concert and everything. Everyone went to shit. But strike uh, ended the music at the Blue Ridge Rock Fest. But it may not have been from lightning. So they were saying it was the storm originally. Remember? They said the storm mm -hmm. caused uh, it to be shut down. But when they were investigating what some are calling a nightmare... Um, and what led into its cancellation, the organizers stated they canceled the festival because of the weather. Remember, that's what they said. We mentioned this on the Wednesday podcast. Uh, but mm -hmm. some people are saying that's not the full story. So they received hundreds of emails and social media messages from festival goers asking us to look into why the festival was canceled for weather after it was already hit by the storms. Stagehands who worked the festival told um, this news, uh, WDBJ7, <laughs> they walked out on Saturday because of poor working conditions. So it was a lot more <laughs> than just the weather, guys. Because I thought it was weird that they said it was canceled because of the weather because I'm pretty sure it rained at Aftershock and nothing was shut down. But it wasn't a storm. So it was like, it was just weird because normally they'll they'll figure out how to get it going. But uh, it made us feel like they were putting the rug, pulling the rug over the real problem of what was going on. So, so shout out to Tank for shedding light on this. That's um, awesome to actually hold these people accountable. And I think it's really important because a lot of these people are not held accountable and they just keep doing what they're doing and get away with it. So it's really cool that um, he shed light on it. Hopefully there is no repercussions. Like he says in the video, there, there won't be, because the problem is when you do call out these festivals, they'll black, they'll blackball you. Um, 100%. So what, so, so what was the actual problem? Do we not know? We're just assuming that there uh, is um, an actual problem. So the working conditions got really bad after the storm. Is that what it so well, working at, excuse, so stagehands right? say the oh. issue started 10 days before the actual festival began when workers first arrived in Virginia International <laughs> Raceway. They say from the beginning, the showers were not functional and living conditions were unsanitary. Workers claim more than 150 workers were forced to share six porta potties for two weeks of festival preparation and during the actual event. They say the porta potties were all were only cleaned out every few days. We were literally oh, living around boy. our own filth and our ah, own mess. It sounds oh, like that Woodstock in the 90s. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah, gosh. But, but this was for the workers. This is all ahead of it, you know? So fed up with the conditions, the stagehands presented a list of demands to Blue Ridge Management on Friday. That's awesome that they got together and did that. So, and they demanded more water stations, showers, food, and safer structures within 24 hours. For 24 hours or else they would strike. So uh, they canceled the Saturday's program, citing weather concerns. They said they would provide an update on Sunday's events by 5 p.m. on Saturday. The same deadline for the stagehand strike. So they try to fucking cover it up is what I'm gathering out of this, um, which is really what crazy. It sounds like. Yeah. So it fell on deaf ears, says the stagehands. Um, the stagehands said 80% of the workers were gone by 7 p.m. The festival was canceled and workers were left frustrated by the aftermath. They're trying to control the narrative on us and trying to bury the fact that we ended up walking out because this correlates with all these other festivals that have dropped the ball and put people's safety at risk. And, you know, that really sucks, man. Uh, that really sucks. Luckily, you know, the festival I went to well, Aftershock was well organized for the most part, maybe just long lines at the water station, but it was pretty manageable, you know, if you're prepared for it. Um, it, Bro, it was so many really of these, nice. So many of these promoters, though, they're just like, they don't really consider all of the aspects. They're just like, okay, let's see how many tickets we can sell to this thing. They don't even care if there's enough room for everybody. You know what I mean? Like, this is not, this is, this is way more common than it should be. You know what I mean? And I feel like because like Firefest got so popular and it got a big documentary and now they're going to have a second one and shit like that. There's so much in this world where I feel like people see negative things and then they go, I could take advantage of this thing yeah. that was negative and make <clears throat> money off of it. And they just stop caring about the positive aspects of it. Stop caring about taking mm. care of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The well, yeah. Cause just it's like trying to sell tickets. Huge responsibility <clears throat> to put on a huge festival like this. It's a lot of work. Tyler, says still waiting to hear from them for a refund so they still have the money 
Yeah, that's know? yeah. I was just about to read that too. That's crazy. Not just Tyler. I'm seeing a bunch of people in the chat that have not gotten a refund yet. So Blue Rock Fest, though they went out to they told the sheriff's office forty five thousand tickets were sold for this year's festival. However, the sheriff's office estimates there were fifty thousand to sixty thousand people at the festival. So um, W. WDBJ7 reached out to festival organizers multiple times asking if and when attendees can expect a refund. So far, no one from the festival has responded <laughs> to our request for comment. Dude, that's a fucking fail. That I smell a lawsuit horrible. coming. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Guys, make sure you're keeping up to date with this and looking for a class action lawsuit. I'm sure there's going to be one. Um, so you guys can sign it. They'll normally email that to you, uh, check your junk mail. So whatever you signed up with as an email, normally in these class action lawsuits, what they do is they'll gather their email list from the company and they'll send it to you. That's happened to me for a couple financial institutions that file for bankruptcy. They'll reach out to the email you signed up with. So make sure you check your junk mail because they will send it in. They will send it by email and they're of course going to expect people to forget about it and not even sign the paper. So make sure you look out for yeah. that. I'm sure it's coming. Sounds Watch like the spam folder too. You gotta like search yeah. for it. Yeah, exactly. Cause they do it on purpose. They'll title it in a way where it gets thrown in spam. And yep. I've talked to companies about this. This is a, a very common strategy that they do. Domino's tried to do it to me when I, when I was a driver for them. Um, they got sued for underpaying workers for driving. Um, I had that happen with Domino's and a couple other companies, but uh, I'm only going to call it Domino's because they're pieces of shit. But um, <laughs> if, they, if, they don't, if they don't give you a refund, you got to sue them. Like just, just, yeah, there will be there eventually. And I'm not saying that like each individual, individual person is going to have to do this, but if they don't give refunds, there will eventually be yeah. like one big lawsuit that you could sign your name on to, yep. you know, that everybody's going to be a part of and get your fucking money back. Cause oh, that is oh. insane. Uh, Facebook also had a lawsuit that I had to sign because of the data thing. They had a lawsuit. If you guys didn't know, you'd be surprised. I, it's probably the past the deadline. That was the other company too. Facebook had that issue. I signed that. I haven't seen anything yet from them. But yeah, um, it'll probably be like ten cents. So they got sued because of giving out your data um, when it wasn't very clear that they're giving out your data, even though they try to list it in their uh, rules or whatever, or that thing that you always click on and you never read the terms and conditions. Yeah. So, Intentional yeah, deception. They bury it in like 500 pages of. Tiny yeah. So letters. keep an eye out for that. Uh, these companies are shady. They're going to try to get out of it. And you know what? A lot of them succeed. I, I guarantee you, like the whole Facebook lawsuit, a lot of people didn't even sign it. But, anyways, mm. so that forced Baby Metal to cancel the concert, of course. And we had read about this uh, last podcast. So they, they obviously didn't play. A bunch of bands <laughs> didn't play. Hey guys, thank you for watching. The Gaijin guys this year are really trying to up our game in the Japanese music news space. So we really rely on our Patreon supporters and our members over here on YouTube. So thank you so much. So if you guys can help, consider becoming a Patreon supporter or a member. And you also get exclusive group reactions from all of the guys. Stay awesome, everyone. See you in the next one. See you.